<laughs> My brother was a teacher, a real life living teacher of RE, and I went into a school with him, his very own school, and he kind of he did a, a few sort of classes for me. And then very quickly after he read it, he said, this is absolutely no relation to teaching whatsoever. So, busk it. I don't think teachers realistic. I don't think we've ever set out to make teachers realistic, have mm, we? Not really, no. Um, we always wanted it to be a kind of heightened, like heightened reality. Mm. I've had some surprising conversations with younger teachers, I know, as to, as to what they get up to. So I'm kind of like, ooh. <laughs> I think there's an element of teachers where, the, you know, they like the public to think that they're pretty saint-like. Whereas actually the reality is they're human and they do have sex lives and they do swear. Because a lot of people say to me that my school's worse than that. <laughs> the, the episode with me and uh, Nina in the, in the cupboard, in the storeroom <laughs> cupboard, and people going, people side all over to me and go, yeah, no, that, that's how I met, one, met my wife. She was head of, uh, you know, she was head of, I don't know, IT. And we've got friends, uh, my wife and I and family have got friends who are teachers. And one teacher in particular just says, it doesn't happen like that. It, you know, it's ridiculous. And another teacher will say, it is fantastic, that is so-and-so, we recognise that, we recognise that. And of course, it's given a lot of them a lot of street, uh, street cred, because suddenly they're zappy, streety, you know, and uh, so they like it, but there are certain people. But uh, I think, you know, the uh, NUT, they just didn't like it because it, it made them look sloppy and everything. But it, it's entertainment in the end, we're not doing true life docs here. Uh, the NUT, I think, complained about the show because they, they generally like to give the impression that they don't smoke um, ganja, mm. they don't drink. Um, they they shouldn't be, they should they not be. Fags. And they don't swear. And there's not Probably. animals roaming around in the school. Mm. I think we're not kind of going out there to set ourselves up as a realistic portrayal of the teaching world. We're just going to make it a bit of jolly television. Yeah. If, you're t if you're placing something culturally in, you know, this country and doing something specifically for that, you know, around that subject, then of course you're opening up that argument. But we weren't. Ours, the, the premise was just basically, it just so happened that all these people were teachers, but it's about a gang of mates that are, you know, that are more like, more like the kids than the kids themselves. They can sit and complain all they like. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't care, I've left school. <laughs> Everyone just got on really, really well. And I think when, you, when you're creating something like that, like when I did this life as well, there's a very special bond that happens, you know, because you, you have to trust each other a lot and you're quite exposed because you don't know how it's going to be received and all of those kind of things, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> it's one of the funniest jobs I've done, yeah. It's a great crowd and... Uh... Uh, we do have a lot of fun. You know. There were times when it was like, oh my God, I'm enjoying this too much. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Joven. <laughs> you don't have to get on with everyone you work with. You don't. I mean, look at Andy Lincoln. Hate him. The thing with Andy is, is that a lot of people will say, oh, he's such a lovely bloke, right? That isn't true. First time I met Andy, I said, hi, Andy, I'm James. He said, did you know I was egging this life? You've broken my facts. He used to have a, a sort of, a, a, you know, an entourage of 30 or 40 people on set with him all the time. His own stylist, own makeup person, own chauffeur. He'd have a big, you know, Renault Spass pull in and it would open it with a full leather jacket and stuff. And, and it was just, it, it, to be honest, when Andy wasn't on set, it was a great atmosphere. And when, when as soon as he came on, everyone was just on edge. <laughs> no, let me just go for a piss. He's a great guy as a person. He's a great leader as regards his energy and his input. Um, and he's just, I can't say more than that, he's fantastic. It was the end of the day and they went, do something. Do something, you know, do something funny. And uh, I tried my damnedest. I, th I, you know, threw caution to the wind. And hey presto, that's what you got. Everybody was kung fu fighting. I mean, basically, any, you know, if you see me out at one o'clock in the morning at some club, those are the moves that I will be busting. They're some of my best, best moves are, are there. But um, I don't usually get them out so much, do you know what I mean? But I need to, I need to hear the sounds. <laughs> Andy Lincoln, I think, has it um, written into his contract that at some point he has to get butt naked. He loves it. He does love it. He loves it. The producer said, right, so for the final episode, we want you to be stark bollock naked for most of it. And, uh, and I went, right, OK, OK, why? I think he's got a very nice bottom. I think he enjoyed showing it off, yeah. I think, I'll, 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 pretty much, I'll, I'll, I'll only get my ass out if it has absolutely nothing to do with the script. 
that would be the only reason I'll, I'll do it. So as soon as they pitched that to me, saying that it was about his inner, inner life, I said, no, come on, be honest. They said, no, there's no reason apart from the fact we just want your ass out. And I went, fine. I'm your man. It's looked already, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for your girlfriend. Yeah, dancing around in her underwear and you didn't take a blind bit of notice. I'll probably do it before you do. They are the chippiest bunch of skanky little show-offs, my class. They just took the Michael royally out of me. That's all they did. And I would be in scenes with them and I just thought, I've never been so much. This is, this is must be what teaching's like. Because they just looked at me like, what? What do you want? <laughs> the dream sequence was very mm -hmm. much tied up with Simon's character and they felt natural because he was so neurotic, it felt natural that he would kind of picture himself in those bizarre situations. Everyone loved doing them. I mean, it was great. You get dressed up as a kid and, you know, in the first series and, and Nina was dressed as, as some dominatrix, you know, everyone was happy that day. There were some great little bits, like, the, I mean, the bit with um, our, our friend Cara where she was uh, getting chased around the, the playground. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was good bits then. I like that. It's a bit blue. Mm. Well, you just said it's a bit blue. But yeah, go on. It's not like that sort of DVD. Carry on. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last night, we went out. And um, this is the result. <laughs> Generally, after the sort of first initial shock of starting the, the show and people's nerves kind of became a little bit diffused, everyone was just trying to rip the piss out of each other, really. <laughs> That's principally how you'd go into a scene, just trying to make the other people laugh, and it just got a bit chaotic from time to time. But it was brilliant. It was brilliant. We spend a lot of time together off screen as well as on. Um, have a lot of fun. I giggle too much. <laughs> Far too much giggling. <laughs> and often those are the best takes, where... I, mean, I did one with Nav the other day, where we were just on the edge of a corpse. And those are the ones where it feels really great because it's, it's got that sort of right energy and it's just about to go into something else. Really. <laughs> Come on, moment, please. We had one moment, I don't know, the girls are doing a scene and I can't, I just, I, I don't know, I lost it. And I just, the director asked me to, to leave the set. He does this thing where when he starts <laughs> laughing, he starts to cry at the same time. <laughs> I'm aware of the stress. Some members of staff have failed to catch Cut that one more, please. Cut, going again. Gilly Beverly plays the headmistress. She, she is, I mean, she's, she's, she's lovely, but she's heard most of the scenes. She comes into the staff room and we're listening and she's, she has a go at us. And as soon as she turns into this monster, we go. It was interesting, that sort of, particularly the first series until the crew got to know me and stuff. They did use, when I came on set, there was that element that people would stand by and back and, and you know, at first they were calling me Miss Bevan and things like that. <laughs> No, if you speak to me like that again, I will hit you. Do it then, go on, hit me, hit me. They didn't have trouble, you know, uh, trouble on a stick, both of them. They come in pairs, you know, and they, uh, I mean, they're like some freaky Siamese twins. You caught me laughing when I came back over this way, didn't you? Know, He's making me laugh. Banana in the tail, He's acting like four. You got a banana in the tail, eh? Kurt and uh, Brian are definite characters that Adrian and Nav uh, Naveen have uh, put together. Um, and they work really well together. They're kind of like our Laurel and Hardy and all those twosomes. It's my cup, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah? All right? All right? All the good stuff is improvised that we come up with. Um, the rest of the actors kind of stick to the script. Um, but we kind of, uh, we go with it, don't we, really? Just, yeah. We live it, keep it real. We're kind of living and breathing it all the way uh, throughout the day. From the moment, really, the moment I get up in the morning. Um, Likewise. I, I try not to um, wash my feet because I think, right, that's smelly feet. Um, and we just, similarly, it, it kind of comes penis, alive, really, doesn't it? It kind of comes alive, you get there, you're on set. The lights are on, they start filming, and we just bang! It, it, literally, bang. Um, the lads spend a lot of the time on the um, on the PlayStation, to be honest. So, and, and Lloyd's like, Lloyd's just as bad. He's well, well in with it all. We do work now and then, but it does interfere a lot with the PlayStation. 
Come off that PlayStation. Alrighty, That's us. I seem to favor the game. <laughs> Why is teaching such, such a success? Well, it's because of me, isn't it, surely? What makes teachers a success, I think, is the soundtrack. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely the soundtrack. Um, also, the... Um, editing? Clever editing. I think it's healthily, politically incorrect. Yeah. Camera's pretty good on it. The lighting. It's successful because it's fun, I think. It's energy. It's, there's a lot of energy and fun and, and people identify with it and it makes them laugh. Then around about fourth place is the um, script and then the actors come after that. Oh, after the costume. I just think it's something that it's a show that anyone can, can relate to. We all went to school. Um, on the school, obviously. I mean, it's called Teachers, so it's a good job at setting the school, really. Because if you set it in, on a farm, I, I don't think it, it would work. work. It wouldn't work. Not the statement. I don't think, see, that's the thing. That's what needs to be kind of said. I don't think the show would work on a farm or even on an airport. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call one in an airport? Um, flight. <laughs>